Pretty exciting stuff. I know NFTs are difficult to understand. I know there's a lot of BS in this industry. But I also know that there's billions flowing into NFT platforms and projects. And this money is not coming from like kids and crypto and speculating and stuff like that. It's coming from the biggest and best venture capitalists in the world. These are people who are early investors in almost every big name technology company that you see today. The ones even with trillion dollar valuations. They were some of the first investors in Facebook, Twitter, Coinbase, top crypto projects. These are the guys that invest in Coinbase in 2012 when the valuation was like 50 million. And it came out at whatever, 60, 70, 80 billion. Yes, it has come down, but these guys don't care because they're in, they're cheap. They get first look at the best stuff and they sh tell, most of the time they say no. When they do say yes. It's usually a good investment for these guys. <laughs> and they're all investing almost across the board. NFTs, Web3, the metaverse. And this is smart money. This is like the super smart money. So we're in the middle of creating tons of educational material and content on NFTs in the metaverse. It's going to include videos, not just of me, but from the smartest people in the industry who I'm meeting, like Dr. Singh. But tons of people are coming to us. And for me, that's what I want to bring in front of you to show you what we're seeing, where I'm investing, why I'm going all in in a market where I know you're seeing a terrible CPI. Holy shit, the market's come down. And it's been a crappy week. We've gone up and we just gave back all those gains. Are we going to hit the lows again? Are we going to keep, you know, difficult, fine. Th this is something that you need to prepare for. You need to start investing. There's a reason why the big money is flowing in, in one of the worst markets in decades, easily in decades. I mean, you don't see, it's not often when you have a global recession, the Fed's still raising rates. They're usually lowering rates, trying to spur economic growth. There's growth is, is stopped. <laughs> It's going to get a lot worse in this market where, yes, it's going to be a great time for investments and things like that. And that's fine. There's certain things that are going to work. And I'm going to bring those to you. But these are the areas that we're going all in on. These are the people we're partnering with. These are people that we're talking to. You're going to see a lot of partnerships with Curzy Research with a lot of these great people that have massive, massive followings because they know that, hey, we need a guy from Wall Street that people trust because we have some great projects, and my job is to find those great projects and bring you the good stuff and the good people. Because if you look at crypto, like I said, from the day one, day one I covered it in crypto, I told you, 90% of the stuff I look at is garbage. 10% is absolutely amazing. And at one time, the average gain that in our portfolio was, the average was over 600%. Yes, a lot of stuff has gotten crushed. But you could see the returns that you could generate in this industry. Because billions is flowing in. Again, metaverse, NFTs, Web3 projects. During one of the worst years, you need to start educating yourself on these trends. Whether it's through me, whether it's through somebody else, that's fine. Because this industry, if you're looking at Web3, if you're looking at these things that we're talking about, it's not like cloud, 5G, AI, the trends you hear about, right? These are industries where insiders, big money, has mostly access to get into these trends early. That's what they were doing in, in, in AI especially. Most of these companies are being bought out. How many pure AI companies do you know that are publicly traded? I mean, there's companies that have AI capabilities, but they're not pure AI companies. They're private companies that got bought by all the major technology companies right away. You don't have access to them as visual investors. 5G, you really don't. Oh, you know, these companies have come out and they're getting to 5 I'm talking about early, super, super early. Same thing with cloud. I mean, these guys were invested so early before most people knew what cloud was. Probably a good five years before people knew what cloud was. It's different. Most of the big money, Wall Street, they still don't understand NFTs, and they definitely don't understand the metaverse. I saw that this week. I mean, just look at my Twitter, at Frank Curzio. You want to follow me? Follow me. If not, don't. Again, I'm very controversial, and I like to push buttons on and have fun with it. But man, just the shit that I was seeing on CNBC from just the story that's being told out there. Well, I don't see everyone wearing these big glasses. It's not about glasses. You're not going to wear glasses. You're not going to wear these big headsets. No. That's not what, what the metaverse is about. And look how clunky the graphics are. The graphics are a million times better. But this is about ownership. And this is about what happened over the past couple of years that changed, that changed our culture. And it's going to change our culture forever of what we saw during the po political season and during COVID. I mean, Ivermectin, right? If you look on a CDC site right now, that's listed as a treatment for COVID. 
Yet they almost ruined and tried to destroy Joe Rogan's career when he took that and said it worked for him. I was reporting things on COVID and people were drilling me when it had nothing to do with money. It had nothing to do with me. I was just saying, hey, you know, I have kids with you. This is what I'm hearing. I'm fortunate enough to have, a, you know, following you guys listening and, and you know, people emailing me overseas and telling me what was going on before it even came to the U.S. And, and, and then we look at politics. And regardless of what side you like or what, we, the United States is founded on freedom of speech. I mean, you have to be able to debate because there's one thing we can both agree on. I wouldn't say the left and the far, far right would agree on. But most, you know, moderate Democrats and Republicans is we want the best for our children. We can all agree on that. And we want to leave this place when we go in a better place for our children and make the next generation better, right? Isn't that the ultimate goal? So why don't we talk about climate change? Why don't we debate about, about tough topics and back and forth? We're in a world where you can't debate. You're in a world where you better follow an agenda, especially if you work as an anchor for one of these companies. You better support them. You try being conservative at times, you're fired. You're gone. Goodbye. I mean, remember what, when, when the news channels used to have, seriously, on CNBC, on Fox, and CNN, MSNBC is just gone. They're gone. That's like the, the ultimate, I hate my America channel. I want to kill everybody and shoot myself in the face channel. I mean, holy cow. Uh, I've never seen so much like anger and pissed off people in my life. But even CNN, Fox, and you look at so many of these shows, they used to bring on CNBC, like people from both sides. Right? Used to be on conservative and, 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 you know, someone who's you know, a liberal or, or, or just and, and have a talking point and have the back and forth. It used to be like that. It used to be like that a little as three years ago. Now it's just like we're just going to bring on people to just jam our message down your freaking throat. I mean, there's no like there's nobody coming on just giving you a different opinion or suggesting something else. I mean, that is not healthy. That's not how you know we got to where we are in the, you know, the most powerful country, greatest country in the world. But we all saw this, and getting and, and how does this factor in? Well, the metaverse. This is this is what factors into the metaverse. It's the freedom. This is why crypto was created because there's not trust. This is why Bitcoin was created. There's no trust in the system. We don't trust our politicians. We need another currency. Now you're seeing the blockchain. Now you're seeing NFTs. You know, having records of everything that you have right there. That's your stamp of approval. Nobody can change it. This is the ledger. It doesn't have to be kept at a bank that's going to charge you fees. You get a chance to create whatever you want or say whatever you want or do whatever you want, and you don't have to worry about it. That's what the internet was about. That's the metaverse. It's not this freaking clunky system of people like, oh my God, they're going to play a big video game and hang out. No, it, just people are not getting it at all. But you know who's starting to get it? The venture capitalists are definitely getting it. Wall Street's starting. You see Fidelity? Fidelity's now offering crypto. And Bitcoin, BlackRock, their Aladdin system, that software that everybody's on, money managed services, it, it, it's $21 trillion in assets, $22 trillion in assets under management. They just partnered with Coinbase to give them access to crypto. It's coming, but for individual investors, you, you have the chance to get in very, very early here. And I'm not telling you to sell everything and go in it, but 5% it, of your capital needs to be dedicated to the space. Just 5%. Just like 5% was to uranium, 5% to gold, and 5%, I mean, you look at gold, it wasn't too good, but 5% to whatever. Maybe it's 10% in technology and large cap, and that, you know, just surged and provided you amazing returns for 10 years while gold did shit. Now uranium's doing well. You know, you want to be diversified in certain areas and speculate in certain areas. This is an area where that 5%, if you get this right, could be worth 5x the size of the rest of your 95% of your portfolio. Where people are speculating in small caps that are already publicly traded companies that come out, some of them at billion dollar valuations, where a lot of the growth already took place. That's the market we live in with SPACs and all this bullshit, the roadshows and the crazy valuations they came out at. In crypto, you, you could invest in the ground floor of a lot of these companies. And this is what we want to present to you. I'm going to continue to bring guys to Dr. Singh. Uh, just great, great names in crypto. People that invested in Bored Apes when you know, just you look at their blog posts and, and one guy that I was talking to was, was in his blog post. He's like, tell them to buy Bored Apes uh, NFTs when they were like a, f a few hundred dollars, thousand dollars. He's like, you need to buy this stuff at $800. You need to get a hold of some of these. 
I mean, some of them going for millions now. These are guys that are early investors in this stuff and laughing as, as you know other people are getting in so late into these bullshit trends. But these are the people I want to bring in front of you. This is the stuff I want to educate you on. And is there a learning curve? Yes. As you get older, do you want to learn more? No, you hate learning new shit, right? You, you just settle in your ways. You want to sit in your chair and watch TV programs and whatever. Try to get out of that. Because this is an area that's very exciting right now. We've done the research. We've been in it. We're spending money. I'm fully invested in this thing. I'm not just talking shit here, but this is an area that's very, very exciting. Again, even if you don't want to look at the stuff that we're creating, educate yourself on this sector. You could find some stuff out there. Be careful of the sites that you look at. But a lot of people want to work with us. We're going to bring a lot of these big names to you in lots of interviews, lots of educational content. And open up those questions and start doing live chats. This way everyone could participate. You could ask lots of questions. We could bring on, you know, really cool people. If everyone's an idiot or a troll, we can kick them off immediately. Again, just you know, things that we want to do to help the community. Because once those communities are built, just like the cop, the podcast that we have and Wall Street Unplugged, these, you have those groups and those communities are extremely, extremely powerful.